today i have an exciting video for you as we dive into real f1 visa interview success stories so i had the privilege of helping two students prepare for their visa interviews and they were both approved now there are two reasons why i'm sharing this with you one is the fact that they were approved obviously and the second reason is because they had uniquely strange stories and could have been easily denied one of them has a bachelor's degree in chemistry and is coming to the U.S. to do another bachelor's degree, which is in data science. The other person was denied an F1 visa before and applied again using a different I-20 from a different school into a different program. If you are new here, my name is Shaibu and I make videos on how to study abroad, how to pass your F1 visa interview and how to navigate life in a foreign country. Consider subscribing so that you don't miss any of my future videos. The first success story features Molai, a young man from Sierra Leone with a previous bachelor's degree in chemistry. He's been working as an entomologist and data technician since graduation, and this sparked his interest in data science. So he reached out to me for mentorship and I gave him a date for a mock interview. Now before that, I suggested that he watches all my F1 visa interview videos. What I liked about him was that he went through the videos and prepared specific questions and answers for my opinion. So this is how his F1 visa interview went. So as usual, he exchanged greetings with the visa officer and passed the I-20 and passport following a request for them by the visa officer. First question, where are you working and what is your position? He replied, I am working for the US President Malaria Initiative as entomologist and data technician. Question 2, what are your plans after your studies? He replied, after completing my degree in data science from Bay Atlantic University, I intend to come back to my country and continue working for the US President's Malaria Initiative as a data analyst and also develop models that will show the special distribution of mosquitoes and make predictions of malaria cases in Sierra Leone that will help the organization to know when and which malaria control interventions are needed. This answer captures a lot and makes it hard to be denied actually. However, there is one more thing. Does he have the funds for his studies? So question three, do you have a brother or a sister? He replied, I have two sisters. Question four, where do they attend school? He replied, in Germany. Question five, which school in Germany do they attend? He replied, Strasbourg University. The next question, why did you choose the US despite your sister's schooling in Germany? He replied, for my research, I found out that the US is the number one in the world that provides the best education and also degrees from the US are well respected and recognized all over the world. The next question, who is your sponsor? He replied, my father. Now the next question, what does he do? He replied, he's a medical doctor and he owns a private clinic. This is clearly a credible sponsor and at this point, he was unlikely to be denied a visa. He's fortunate that his dad is a medical doctor with his own clinic. But let's look at the next question he was asked. How long has the hospital been in existence and how many employees does he have? He replied, the clinic has been in existence for the past 15 years and has over 20 employees. This is a good answer and very specific. If he had failed to mention the number of workers, you know, the visa officer could have decided that everything he has said is a lie. You know, this is why it is important to be aware of your sponsor's profession and income sources. So his visa was approved. The second success story features Hamza, a Ghanaian working as a marketing officer for an insurance company. He was denied a visa in 2022 with Pasha funding to study MBA. This time, he was going to a different school to study a master's in communication studies, still with Pasha funding. His case was a tricky one, but we addressed any potential red flags that could arise during the interview, ensuring that he had solid answers to satisfy the visa officer's concerns. I also like the fact that he watched my videos and prepared specific questions and answers for my opinion. One of the things I suggested to him was building his confidence and communicating clearly. When he was asked about his finances last year, his answer was not specific enough, resulting in the denial of his visa. Now let's look at the questions he was asked during his visa interview. First question, where are you going? He replied, I am going to Western Illinois University to pursue MA in communication studies. The next question, who is paying for your deficits? He replied, my big brother. Again, a close relationship with a sponsor is always important. The next question, where is he now? He replied, he's currently in Dubai. The next question, are you married? He replied, no, I am not. He could have added that he has a fiance that he wants to marry, you know, and all of that. The next question, do you have a kid? He replied, no. The next question, what do you currently do? He replied, I am the marketing officer for XYZ insurance company and I have been assigned to the ABC branch. 
The next question, why the change of schools? He replied, Western Illinois University has always been my preferred and first choice school, but last year the admission decision came after my visa interview, which was very late, so I had to defer to this year. Obviously, this is what has changed about his application, and so the visa officer wanted to understand the reasons for the change. This was an expected question, and so we addressed it before the interview. The next question, why are you going to study radio and television? He replied, I'm going to study MA in communication, but then she interrupted him. Now, the no answer starting his reply is not appropriate, but he had a document to prove his case. Ideally, he could have replied in a more appropriate way. So when she interrupted him, she said, it's on your I-20 as radio and television. He replied, yes, because the school CIP code captured the program as radio and television, but I have a document from the school explaining that. Then the consul officer said, let me see. He handed it to her and she read it word for word and she probably checked it out on the internet saying, okay, 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 okay. Hamza was trying to offer her his admission letter as well, but she said it's fine and she added, all right, I'll be approving your visa. So that was just how his visa was approved. Both of them had strange stories, but Hamza's story was actually more strange because he had been denied before. He was going into a different program, a different school, like all these dynamics and, you know, so, but we had to prepare well for the interview and, well, I guess I did a good job with him. So, yeah. So that's all for today's video. If you have found it helpful, I will appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel and if you share the video with your friends. And also make sure you like the video and remember that if you prepare yourself very well, you know, by watching my videos and also if you have the right confidence, which comes through practice, you should get your visa approved. It's not really that hard. So I wish you the best and I'll see you in my next video.